And greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth, and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Tom Hartman here with you, broadcasting live, coast-to-coast, border-to-border, on uh, Pacifica Radio, on Dial Global, on commercial stations from L.A. to New York, on Free Speech TV, via Dish Network, DirecTV, etc. And, uh, oh, and... And in Europe and, and Africa via Pacifica. Anyhow, welcome to our program. Rich Trumpka is Richard Trumpka is with us, the president of the AFL CIO. AFLCIO.org is the website. Uh, Mr. Trumpka, welcome to the program. Tom, thanks for having me on again. It's it, good to it, hear your voice. It is an honor. Um, a question right out of the right out of the gate here. Um, we're seeing people take to the streets in Spain, in Germany, in France, uh, in in Greece, all over the all over Europe, as their governments are promoting austerity programs that are not that dissimilar from Paul Ryan's bill, or frankly, you know what's been going on here for the last thirty years. What's it going to take? Well, I think it's going to take more of us getting in the streets to change the national dialogue that's going on out there. Because what you're seeing play out in the states and in the local areas. Uh, is a fight for the moral character of our country. And whether we're going to be a country that really does uh, promote full employment and the middle class and an education for everyone and health care for everyone and pension security, or whether we're going to go on more of the same that we've had, where the people at the top do real well and everybody else is sort of subservient to them. Well, here's the challenge, it seems. the Everything you just described, I think, you know, if you took them one by one and asked Americans, most Americans would say, yeah, I, you know, that's a great idea. You aggregate them like that and 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 present them to the Republican Party and they start screaming that this is socialism and Fox News goes off on it. And 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 in fact, we're, we're moving very aggressively in the opposite direction. The uh, uh, you know, by privatizing everything from parking meters to roads to to power, you know, power supplies systems and and so on. How do we how do we reinform America that the commons, the infrastructure uh, not only are ours, you know, education, for example, and you know, all these voucher programs that these Republicans are pushing, not only are ours, but that that they are also the the soil in which a good business, an honest business, can root itself and be uh, a benefit to the community and make money. Well, I think you take a look at the, the countries that have succeeded and, and what they've done. If you take a look at Germany, they have a high-wage society. Uh, they export to the rest of the world. They have a great social safety net, uh, and they weathered this last recession far better than anybody else. Although they lost more products originally, they didn't have the layoffs. Their economy is bounding, and they're beyond where they were pre-recession. The same with the Scandinavians. I also think that it's playing out right now in the streets. If you look at what's happened uh, in Wisconsin, you had a governor that came in with the austerity program advocating the same policies that Herbert Hoover did before he caused the Great Depression, uh, and uh, his popularity plummeted. He went from the high 60s to the low 30s. He continues to drop. The same thing happened in Ohio when they advocate these austerity programs. And 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 apparently in Michigan, you know, we've we've done a lot about uh, Rick, um, um, Snyder, Rick the Rick Snyder, yeah, yeah Rick Snyder. And and it, but it it seems that the Demo- the Republicans are betting or the conservatives maybe I should say because there are a few Democrats in there are betting that people will forget about this by the time of the election. Well, uh, so far that hasn't been true. In fact, it's been the opposite. People have picked up momentum in state after state after state. Uh, you just saw an election up in uh, New York that had been a long-held Republican seat for for decades, and they were trying to do away with Medicare and Social Security. That was the issues that were there, and the voting population rejected it resoundingly. If you take the issues, as you noted earlier, uh, every one of them are rejected by strong, strong uh, majorities up into the 70s and 80 percent, and yet they continue to advocate for the rich because they're paying back the politicians that bankrolled their candidacy instead of supporting or doing what's right by the American public. This report just came out on the Massey Mine disaster that killed 29 men and pretty clearly points out uh, a, a number of things. One, 26 out of those 29 miners on autopsy had black lung disease, uh, whereas in a union mine it's only 6%. Uh, number two, that had there been a, sa- a union safety officer there, it never would have happened. 
or for that matter, had the union done it, or excuse me, had the miner, had the mining company done it. But it was a non-union mine, so they were cutting corners, and they wouldn't, you know, they Absolutely. didn't have it. And uh, why is it that, uh, you know, this is something that you and I know about? We're paying attention to these things, but I would guess that probably 95 percent of Americans who watch just you know network news and and you know get their newscast in three minute bites at the top of the hour when they're listening to music stations. Um, that that this has this kind of story, this kind of fundamental story that's that's about how how labor protects us, doesn't break through the media wall. Well, you know what, uh, you you have people that have for the last thirty years that have intentionally tried to undermine and, and to uh, ruin uh, labor and tried to destroy the right to bargain collectively and to freely associate in, in trade unionists. It wasn't by accident. It was a deliberate strategy. And they're supported by a bunch of the, the politicians that uh, are supported by the Koch brothers or other multimillionaires and, and Fox Network and other right-wing radio shows like that so that they can get rid of the labor movement. But I think it's starting to break through. We started having the debate on collective bargaining after Wisconsin. And in the high 70s, the American public said people should have that right to, to bargain collectively. It is a ladder to the middle class. It is a way for us to be a, a power balance against uh, corporations who have way too much power and pay too little. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Um, over the weekend, I was uh, kicking around the Internet, and I found a 1994 17-year-old debate between on Charlie Rose, on the Charlie Rose Show, between Sir James Goldsmith, who was saying that an economy should exist for the people and that if we signed uh, GATT and the WTO, this was just months before we did, that we would see massive factory closures across the United States. Of course, we've seen 50, 54,000 factories close in just the last 10 years. Um, and then Laura Tyson came on, the chairman of President Clinton's uh, Council of Economic Advisors, saying, oh, no, 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 this is going to produce millions of American jobs, and it's going to be a wonderful thing if we join the WTO. Um, is it time to re-engage that argument? Oh, absolutely. It's past time to re-engage that argument. You remember uh, when Barack Obama ran the last time, he said he would do that. He would take a look at it. We'd do an inventory uh, of all these trade agreements, figure out what works and what doesn't work, and he'd have a different trade regime. So far, we haven't seen that. And he's about to introduce uh, three trade agreements that are all under the old uh, Bush-Clinton uh, uh, trade regime, where right. it's workers are second, third, or no, workers are tenth or eleventh, and everything else is in front of them. Right. And so, how does organized labor how, and 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 our many viewers and listeners who are not don't have the good fortune of being uh, unionized employees, how do they participate in this? We have about a minute left here, sir. Well, I think they do what they're doing right now. They get out in the streets. They start writing and demanding from their politicians to do right, to try to create jobs rather than destroy jobs. You know, look at what they're trying to do right now. There's a concerted effort out there in a number of states by the Republicans to eliminate or to disenfranchise significant voters. And I, you know, maybe in the next segment we can actually talk about that because I think it's very significant and it's very threatening to democracy. I, you know, I think it is too. And 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 in fact. Yeah, it's it, it is a major problem, and 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 the people not taking the streets in America, and but and the, the these Republican efforts to to disenfranchise voters are are substantial. We're talking with Richard Trumpka. He's the president of the AFL CIO AFL CIO dot org. There is a uh, there is a, a a program that you guys run for people who are not union members. The website is. Yeah, it's workingamerica.org. Working America. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Richard Trumka is with us, the president of the AFL-CIO, AFL-CIO.org. Uh, you, you mentioned the disenfranchisement of voters before we went into the break. Uh, you want to give us a recap of what you see going on and how, how labor is participating in trying to prevent this stuff from happening? Yeah, well, let me just back up for one second and say, look, we, we sent these people to call, to. Uh, the House of Representatives or the state legislator to create jobs uh, and to put us back to work. And the current policies, really, that they're doing won't create a future for the middle class or for America. Think about this. ExxonMobil makes $45 billion and they get a $156 million rebate check from the government. Gas prices are at a record high, and oil companies receive subsidies paid for by taxpayers. CEOs get a 23% a increase last year in pay. Uh, the GOP uh, 
budget from Paul Ryan, uh, cuts $4.3 trillion out of the budget, gives $4.2 trillion back to the rich. So here's what happens. So they go across the country and they're there. First, they try to take away our, our right, the freedom of workers to come together and form a union so that you have a middle class, uh, a ladder into the middle class. And then they start these things like voter identification things. They just passed one in Wisconsin. Here's what will happen, Tom, in Wisconsin. This is who it will disenfranchise. It will disenfranchise 23% of the elderly. It will disenfranchise 59% of Latino women. It will disenfranchise 55% of African-American males overall and 78% of African males between the age of 18 and 24. They're trying to shorten the period uh, for early voting so that they either eliminate it or shorten it so that fewer people participate. Uh, they're trying to cut students out. They, in, New Jer- in New Hampshire, rather, uh, a guy by the name of Gregory Sorg, the senator, said they shouldn't vote because they're too liberal. Anti-immigrant style, Arizona style, anti-immigrant legislation nationwide. They're trying to intimidate professors in Wisconsin and, and Michigan that write in opposition to them. They're trying to roll back child labor laws in Missouri uh, and Maine. And they're even removing authority from elected officials and giving that authority to unelected people to fire and to nullify contracts and to govern cities. Now, think of what would have happened in a foreign country if somebody would have said, okay, this person was elected, but we're removing them. We're putting in this appointed official that fired the elected officials, got rid of all the contracts, and done everything. That's happening right now in Michigan. Right. These are the assaults on us, and it's an attempt to try to silence any voice of opposition for the 2012 elections. And what we're doing is, one, we're educating. Two, we're fighting those laws to make sure that they, they don't exist. Uh, in Wisconsin, of course, we're doing the uh, citizens' recall uh, we have six uh, Republican senators that voted to take away collective bargaining for public employees will be recalled. Uh, we have uh, a citizen's veto uh, in Ohio to o- overhaul or to veto the law that was passed by the legislation. And remember how they did that. Remember in Ohio, they were in the middle of the vote, and they didn't have enough votes, so they removed two Republican senators in the middle of the vote they were going to vote against it and replace them with two people that would vote for it, and they got by with a one-vote margin. I mean, that's how corrupt uh, this is becoming. This is the kind of stuff that you'd expect out of Libya. Yeah, or or or, or some <laughs> or some banana, banana republic, republic yeah. somewhere, but not in the United States, and yet they're yeah. doing it. So our job is to shine the light on it, get it out to people, and when people find out about it, it does exactly what it should do. It outrages them and say. How dare you assault democracy that way? We won't tolerate it. Yeah. Here's a, uh, just a, a quick 30-second clip of Paul Weyrich, the Republican strategist who arguably helped Ronald Reagan get elected. He uh, died a couple of years ago, but this was back during the Reagan administration. He was speaking to a group of Republican operatives in a church. It's just a very short clip, and I'd love to get your take on it, because it seems to me that the Republicans have been playing this out ever since. Here he is, Paul Weyrich. How many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Now, that, that was in the 1980s. Same game plan. Yeah. Uh, different stadium, same church, different pew. Yep. Uh, they're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to suppress votes uh, of everybody, the elderly, uh, Latinas, African-Americans, workers, uh, everybody who, who they think is opposition. In fact, it's any progressive voice out there, they're trying to silence it and get it out of the way or at least minimize it so that they can do that, so right. they can have a minimum of the people that will elect the party, that will represent the people at the very top one, two, or three percent. Yeah, which is, you know, pretty much what's going on in Mexico, for example. I mean, it's, it's, it's this is, uh, we're seeing the third worldization of the United States. And uh, it, it seems in this, in this last minute that the main thing that we need to be doing is organizing grassroots movements in, in, in collaboration with labor. 
Yeah, all progressive groups. That's what yeah. we're doing. We've come together. We brought uh, 60 some progressive groups together to talk about this and how we can make sure that we actually defend democracy. In the election, uh, in the last couple of cycles, we've had people, lawyers at the polls uh, to protect people's rights to vote because they did settle things in the last couple of elections. Like in, in poor black neighborhoods, there'd be two voting machines. In rich, affluent white neighborhoods, there'd be 20 voting machines so that the line for poor blacks reaches around the building and they don't have the time off of work, so they end up just not voting and going right. away. It's those type of things that we shouldn't allow. They shouldn't be part of our system. And really, they're corrosive to democracy. And and they have to be def- defeated on a state-by-state basis because the federal government doesn't have the power to do that, do they? No, and, you, and that's what you have to fight, each and every one of them. So you're seeing it play out across the United States. It starts in Wisconsin. It goes to Ohio. It goes to Missouri. It goes to all of these different states where right. they try to disenfranchise significant numbers of voters and they start with labor because we've been the only counterbalance to corporate power out there yep. and they're trying to eliminate it and we got to fight back richard trumka president of the aflcio thank you sir